Welcome back to Coloring Through the Bible. My name is Kigan Harkins and it's Friday and that means that we are answering one of your hard questions. Today's question is actually one that a couple of people asked. How do I love my enemies? It's a great question because loving our enemies is one of the cornerstones of Christianity, but how do we do it? And is there a difference between loving our enemies and being a doormat for their abuse? Absolutely. In just a second, we're going to be taking a closer look at Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 36, which really dig deeper into this concept of loving our enemies. But before we do that, I want to address this doormat issue. So if you're like me, I struggle with wanting to please everybody. And I know that I'm not alone. I know that there are a lot of us who we just we want to make everybody happy. We want to do what's expected of us because it'll make them happy. And we tend to become doormats for other people to, to take advantage of us. And I've really been asking God to help me in this issue, to, to help me know that it's okay, that I don't have to always say yes to everything. It's okay to say no. It's okay to remove ourselves from a situation or, or even a friendship that's toxic or harmful. When we look at Jesus's life, which is the cornerstone of how we live our life, we can see that he wasn't a doormat. There were times that he chose to love without putting himself in unnecessary harm. So before we get into this, you know, turn the other cheek topic, we need to put this in the correct context because there's a difference between not being concerned with earthly things. And that means, you know, whether or not people have wronged us, whether we've been insulted or, or something has been taken from us, there's a difference between not being concerned about those things and allowing ourselves to be harmed unnecessarily. Well, for an example, John chapter 8 tells us about Jesus preaching to this group of people and they don't agree with what he said. In verse 59, we read, At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. Jesus didn't just stand there and let them stone him simply because they were his enemies and he was going to let them do whatever they wanted to do so that he could show his love for them. He didn't. That's not the way it works. And it's important to remember that love is not exclusively shown by allowing somebody else to get what they want. Sometimes we show our love for our enemies by, like Jesus, removing ourselves from the situation. You know, Jesus showed them his love by telling them the truth, which that's what they got mad about. And then he showed it to them again by removing himself from the situation so they wouldn't sin by murdering an innocent man. Sometimes the best thing that we can do, the best way that we can show love for ourselves and for somebody who's harming us is by removing ourselves from the situation. And I wanted to clear that up right off the bat because I've heard people use Luke chapter 6 as an excuse for remaining in a dangerous situation or for allowing other people to take advantage and harm them. I mean, I've been guilty of that. I have stayed longer than I should have because I thought that that was what turn the other cheek meant. And, and it's not. And if we look at Jesus' example, we can see that he gave of himself completely, but he did set limits. You know, he took the time to go alone and pray. Even though everybody wanted to be with him all the time, he told them no and, hey, go on ahead, get in the boat, go on ahead. I'm going to stay here and pray. Or while the crowds are really pressing in, let's get in the boat, let's go out to the water where I can teach without having everybody pressing in. He set limits. He gave of himself unconditionally, but he set those limits to protect himself, to, to, to keep himself grounded in what he needed to be. He needed to go alone and pray. And sometimes we need to say no because otherwise we get distracted from doing what God has called us to do. You know, Jesus took every opportunity to teach, to heal, to love, 
but he also left situations that were getting out of hand. So if loving our enemies is not allowing them to harm us, then what is it? Well, let's take a look at Luke chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 27. And let me read to you, for okay? But I tell you, this is Jesus talking. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, don't stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you, and if someone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others what you would have them do to you. Yeah, that's the golden rule. I'm going to stop here for a moment. When I read those verses, the thought that jumps out at me, something that I tell my children all the time, don't allow someone else's behavior to dictate your response. In other words, just because somebody wants to get, get you mad and fight with you, it doesn't mean that you have to rise to the occasion. We don't have to show up for every argument that we're invited to. Just because somebody else does something wrong, it doesn't excuse our behavior. If, you know, we're responsible for the words that come out of our mouth. We're responsible for the way we react. You know, and if, if somebody wants to get us into that fight, you know, they, they've struck us on the cheek, which is an insult, by the way. It's not, not that they've, you know, physically harmed us to, to smack somebody on the cheek, especially in this time frame when Jesus was talking to the people he was originally talking to. That was an insult. So, you know, just because somebody else is snarky, it doesn't mean that we damage our witness because there are people that... They, they bait us, they set traps, they want us to snap. They, they want to be able to say, see, you know, she's no better than me. But that's not what we're saying. We don't love and forgive because we're better than anybody else. We are all equally messed up. We all are on the same sinking ship. And the only difference between a Christian and an atheist is that when I was sinking, Jesus came and picked me up and put me on a lifeboat. I didn't do it myself. That's why we love everybody, even our enemies, because we were all once God's enemies and he wasn't in the, in the practice of loving only the people who loved him. You know, if he didn't love his enemies, we would all be in complete trouble. We would be lost because the Bible tells us that we were all his enemies before we gave our lives to the Lord. So let me finish up reading this section in verses 32 through 36. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit, credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those to whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting let anything to get anything back, sorry. <laughs> then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your father is merciful. One of the songs that, that I grew up singing as a little kid, it was one of my favorites. It was, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. How is the world to know that we have something wonderful to offer through the love of Christ if we show them if we don't show them anything different than what they already have, if we're only doing what, you know, common sense or what, you know, good morality does, how are we showing them anything different? God's love is, is remarkable. It's unique in that he loves the ungrateful and the wicked. So how do we love our enemies? We treat them as if they were not. We don't expect them to respond with the same type of love that we offer, but we offer it anyway. 
And sometimes that means that we do put ourselves in harm's way. I mean, how many people have lost their lives sharing the gospel or, or choosing to stay and nurse the sick, knowing that they'll eventually succumb to the disease? The difference is, you know, and I say this all the time, but the difference is our motives. What is your motive for staying? Sharing the gospel, sharing God's love will sometimes put us in a dangerous situation. But like Jesus, there's a time to stand and there's a time to slip out of harm's way. And we need to rely on the Holy Spirit to, to tell us when to stay and when to go. But our decisions, our reactions, and our responses should always be motivated by that unselfish, undeserved love of Christ living inside of us. I hope that that answered your question. I know that we didn't give you, you know, an exact answer as to what loving your enemy looks like, but I think that that was kind of on purpose. You know, love varies from moment to moment, situation to situation, person to person. The bottom line, loving your enemies looks like God's love for us. If we love like he loves us, then we're doing all right. Thanks for joining me today. Remember to send me those questions. And if you have sent a question in and you haven't, you know, heard my answer yet, hang in there. I promise I will get to you guys. I promise. Thank you so much. And until we see each other again, have a truly, truly blessed day.